Hello, this is AJ, and I just finished a teleseminar with my VIP members. So this was a call-in seminar. Some members could call and talk to me and ask questions and share their comments. During this teleseminar, I also did a short lesson about how to use emotional power correctly. How to use emotional power to get what you want to make the changes that you need to make or want to make. So it was a great teleseminar. And, of course, you can listen to the recording of that teleseminar on the website, on the EffortlessEnglishClub.com website. During this teleseminar today, we had a caller from Iran, from Iran. And... It was a very interesting call and very inspiring for me because we have a lot of fans in Iran. And in fact, there are many, many, many effortless English fans and members in the whole Middle Eastern area. Now, when I say Middle East, I'm really talking about the um, Islamic world from, I don't know, North Africa all the way over to Iran. And, well, in fact, we also have lots and lots of fans and members in Malaysia and Indonesia. So, really, perhaps I should not say the Middle East. Perhaps I should say the Islamic world. But either way, we have lots and lots and lots of fans and members in those countries. And what was interesting is, as the Iranian uh, speaker today was was just was talking about what's happening in Iran and some of the challenges that that um, they have there and some of the difficulties remaining positive because there's a lot of problems with the government, for example. You know, I started thinking and I and I felt like I needed to uh, comment on this a little bit more, and that's why I'm doing this recording because right now throughout the Islamic world, especially and especially in the Middle Eastern area, North Africa and the Middle East. There is a lot of change happening and even almost revolutions happening in many different countries. Egypt, Libya, certainly ongoing in Iran, in Oman, many different countries that people are demanding changes, demanding more freedom, demanding better living conditions. And this is very inspiring to me. And I feel I need to comment on it finally because so many of our members are from these areas. And the first thing I want to say is that you are inspiring us and you are teaching us. Because you see, here in the United States, we need a revolution too. We need some big changes also. We need some people power here. Our government is controlled by the large banks and the oil companies and the military companies. And yet, Americans mostly are doing nothing. Mostly Americans are sitting and watching TV, doing nothing as our economy is destroyed, as our freedoms are disappearing. Most people don't say anything, and they certainly don't do anything. But yet you, in the Middle East, in the Islamic world, you are out there on the streets, you're marching, you're demanding changes. You're making changes, and that's very inspiring to us. You're showing us what needs to happen. You're showing us what we need to do in our own countries, and that's inspiring, and I, I respect you, and I honor you for that. I respect and honor the, the people in Iran, in Egypt, in Libya, in Tunisia, and in many other different countries in the world where this is happening. And I hope some of that spirit will come to America, because we need it a lot also. And I hope that you will not trust us, the American, well, I say us, I hope you will not trust the American government to save you or to help you, because <laughs> as you probably know, the American government is usually supporting the bad guys in your country. So you don't need the American government to save you. You are saving yourselves right now, and that's fantastic. Now I want to, though, address, talk about something specific that the caller from Iran mentioned today. And that is, how do you use positive, strong emotional power 
in these kinds of situations. So in, in this situation, this Iranian caller, uh, it was it was a it was a, a man and a woman. Uh, I believe it was his, I think it was his mom and son. I can't remember exactly uh, their relationship. But anyway, it was, a, it was a man and a woman. And the man particularly was uh, having some difficulty because in Iran uh, they're still struggling. There there's not a lot of freedom in many ways, and uh, for him it's very difficult for him to to stay positive, to keep a strong feeling of confidence and powerful, positive emotional energy, to be a great leader and to, to have great success in his life. It's difficult because he feels like that the situation in this country is so tough. So he was asking, how can he do it? Well, the key thing in these kinds of situations, if, especially if you're trying to be a leader, in these kind of situations, is that you must, must, must develop your emotional power. These kinds of changes happen because of emotional power, mostly. It's not logic. People don't make these big changes because of cold logic. They do it because of emotional power. This is true in your personal life, individually. If you need to make a big change in your life, you need to improve something in your life, and it's a, something difficult for you. Well, you're never going to make that change. You're never going to get that success just from logic and thinking. The only way to make that kind of big, powerful change in your life is to have a lot of powerful, strong emotional energy, emotional power, which you use in a correct way. And in that teleseminar today, which we recorded, I taught one technique for doing this. And that technique focused on two things, pain and pleasure. The first thing was to connect pain to not changing. Connect pain to the old situation, to the thing you don't want in your life. And really, connect pain to the past. Think about all the things that have happened in the past with that situation that caused you pain. And then connect it to the present. Think about all the things right now in your life that are painful because of that situation or problem or belief or behavior. And then connect pain to the future. How will your life be painful in the future if you don't change? And the second half of that technique involved pleasure. And again, we did past, present, and future. So the next thing you do is you focus on the exact change you want. See, this is very important. You must have a vision of what you want, a very clear view, very clear sound or idea, a very clear vision of what you want exactly, what your goal is, what is the change that you must make or will make. You got to know it exactly. Not just, I want things to get better. If you just say something vague, nonspecific, like, I want to improve, eh, that's not powerful. You have to have a very clear vision of exactly what you want. Then you connect pleasure to that change, to that new situation. You connect pleasure to in the past. What that means is that after you make the change, you'll feel better about the past. You'll feel more relaxed about the past. See, after you have a big success, when you look back at all the problems you used to have, you don't get so upset anymore. In fact, sometimes you actually can look at those past problems and laugh. Sometimes you can look at the past problems and even be grateful and say, oh, thank you. I'm glad I had those problems because those problems made me stronger and they caused me to improve my life. So see, when you make a change, when you get that success, your feelings about the past actually change. So you connect pleasure to the past, feeling better about the past problems. Then you connect pleasure to right now. Very important. That when you make this change, when you start making the change, immediately things improve. Immediately you feel better. Things improve in your life. For example, with health. A lot of people focus on just the future benefits of health. If I eat better and I exercise more, then I will lose weight and I'll look fantastic next year, two years from now. Well, that's fine, but what about right now? See, that's a long time to just keep thinking, in the future, in the future it will be better, but now it's terrible. In the future, you got to focus on right now and what will be better right now. So, for example, with health, if you start eating better and exercising, yes, in the future you will have pleasure and great things will happen. But also, almost immediately, you will get benefits. You will start to feel better. 
you'll have more energy in your life. Because you have more energy, you'll do a better job at work. You'll be better in your relationships. You'll be more positive and more happy in all of your relationships. Lots of things will improve immediately when you become healthier, when you start eating better and exercising. That's just one example. So you connect pleasure to right now, to the present, when you make the change, when you do the thing you want to do that needs to be done. And then, of course, yes, you do connect pleasure to the future. You get a clear vision of that great future that you want, and you imagine all the pleasure, and you actually feel it. You smile. You, you change your body. You bring your shoulders back, and you feel that amazing feeling of success. And you imagine it's already happened. It has already happened. So that's the process I talked about. And of course, in the teleseminar today, we focus mostly on making individual changes, making a goal uh, and then achieving it in your own life. But this process is also powerful for leadership. Let's imagine you're trying to make an improvement in your country, that you're trying to get other people to join into a change. Well, you can use this same process, this same idea to do that. You see, what happens is a lot of times when people are trying to make a change in a company, in an organization, in a country, they just focus on the pain part only. And that's fine. It's necessary. It's a necessary first step. But it, it's not the only step. If you only focus on the pain, then it's not very powerful. For example... People might just focus on all the things that are wrong in the country. Look at all the bad things the government did in the past. And they talk about all the terrible things the government did in the past. And then, of course, they talk about all the terrible things that the government is doing right now. And all that's true and very painful. And then they talk about all the pain that the government will do or is planning to do or will continue to do in the future if things don't change. And when you do this in an emotional way, people do get very upset. You cause a lot of pain. And you get people to get more and more and more emotional. The problem is that a lot of leaders just stop there. That's all they do. For example, I read some websites that are alternative websites. Um, and I, I learn all the terrible things that the American government has done in the past, is doing now, wants to do in the future. And it gets me really upset and angry. And, but the problem is that that's all they do. They just keep focusing on just these terrible negative things. They're all true. I need to know them. But if, I, if that's all I do is just keep focusing on that pain, that pain, that pain, and that's all, eventually I just become depressed. I'm like, this is terrible. Ah, I become just depressed and angry all the time. And that can happen with a lot of people. If that's all you do is just talk about all the bad things that are happening, then you're just going to make people angry and depressed all the time. You're not going to create a, an amazing positive change. So it's very important if you're in a country and you're trying to create a change like this, yes, talk about all the pain in the past, present, and future. But then go to the next step. Very important. You must then talk about your vision for a change. You must give people a powerful vision, an idea of how things can be better. Specific. You need to be specific. Exactly. How will things be better after the change? And then you connect a lot of pleasure to that. How will people have better lives? How will their normal daily lives improve? I mean, will, will they have you know, more food and better food? Will they get have better jobs available to them? Will they have more freedoms? You need to talk about everything, very detailed. Talk about how the bad things in the past will be changed and corrected. And talk about how great that will feel and how much happier people will be because of that. Talk about how immediately right now Positive changes will happen. Their lives will improve. Things will be better right now. That There are things that, that will immediately improve. Greater freedom, for example. And then, of course, describe your vision of the future, the better future. How will things become much better 
for everyone one year from now, two years from now, five years from now. When you do both of these things, when you have this, can talk about the pain and all the pain of not changing of the current situation, and also you then talk about the amazing pleasure of making the positive change, of doing something now, and you're very specific and clear, and you connect a lot of positive, amazing emotion and benefits to that change, then you become a more effective leader. So this is very important, and this is my more detailed answer to the Iranian caller today. It's not enough to just focus on the bad stuff. Because when you do that only, you eventually will start to lose your power. Right? You begin to just become frustrated and, and, and bitter and angry or possibly depressed. But if you do that, and, and, and then before people become depressed, before people become too angry, you then give them the positive vision of the future. And you connect a lot of positive, powerful emotion to that. You connect lots of pleasure to doing the change, making the change. Then people become excited and inspired. And then people will take action. They'll actually do something. So this is very, very, very important. Very important. If you're just uh, on Facebook or you're just writing comments about what's happening in your country, be sure to always include the positive pleasure. Always include your vision for a better future. Right? Always describe how things will be better also. Don't just criticize and complain all the time. Both things are necessary. You also, if you just do pleasure, that's also not good. If you're just dreaming all the time, it will be better, it will be better, it will be better, and you ignore the bad stuff, people won't listen to you either because they will think, wow, you're just, you don't understand what's happening now. So you got to do both. First, you do the pain, and you, you really focus on all the pain that's happening and all the pain that will happen if the situation is not changed. And then, immediately after that, you focus on, what you think the better situation should be or will be or must be, what change must happen now and in the future. And then you connect a lot of powerful, positive emotions, a lot of pleasure to that change. That's how you can be a more effective leader. So try that out. Try it on your, your websites and Facebook pages. Try it when you talk to other people in your country. Try it with your family, try it with your friends, to do both of these things whenever you're trying to get a group of people to make a change. And of course, this is not just for political change. You could use this in a company. If you have a team of people and the company really needs to make a change. But most people, you know, they don't like change. They get a little lazy about it. So you have to get them emotional about the change have to show them and find all the problems that are caused by the current situation if they don't change and remind them of the pain make them remember it exaggerate it make it stronger and then show them the better future the change that needs to happen and then connect a lot of pleasure for them for them to making the change so remember, it's, it's not enough. Don't focus on yourself. This is finally the last thing. When you're talking about the pain or you're talking about the pleasure, don't talk about just yourself or don't be too general. You have to focus on the person or people you are talking to. Right? This is the contribution mindset. This is service leadership. For example, in a company, you don't just say, and then the company will make a lot of money. Maybe that's true, but how will that change the employee's life. How will it change your team and their happiness? Right? You have to focus on them. What's the benefit to them? The same for a political change. What's the benefit to the people you are talking to, to the individual citizens? How will their normal lives be better? And then describe that in detail with a lot of emotion. All right. I wish you luck and I hope that you'll do this with yourself also. It's easy in these difficult situations 
easy to become frustrated, easy to become negative. So every day, listen to positive things. Listen to things that make you feel stronger. Build your own strength so that you can help other people. Build your own emotional power so that you can help other people have more emotional power. Very, very important. I wish you the best of luck. I hope someday I can actually come to your country and do a big seminar with you and we can all celebrate the changes that you have made. Thank you for inspiring us and good luck to you. This is AJ. Bye-bye.